The spread of Hinduism in Britain hasn't always been driven by migration. It was a temple bought by a British music legend that would change the face of Hinduism and unite the community in a fight for religious freedom. In 1971, George Harrison became the first member of the Beatles to have a solo number one. My Sweet Lord became the biggest selling record of the year. And it reflected Harrison's newfound passion for a religious movement inspired by a Hindu holy man. In 1965, AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada took the West by storm. At the age of 69, he gave up his family and responsibilities in India and went to America, where he began to attract followers to a movement which spread worldwide. His message was simple. Prabhupada's main focus was chanting the name of Krishna. And when you chant the names of Krishna, uh, it's as if the God was dancing on your tongue. So it's the idea that in every part of your body, you're making divine service. It was a meeting between Prabhupada and George Harrison that led to the founding of a temple in leafy Hertfordshire that would become the focus of one of the most passionate disputes in the history of Hinduism in Britain. We called George and said, we found this beautiful uh, manor building in Lechmore Heath. He said, go ahead. We, he purchased it and we opened Bhaktivedanta Manor in the summer of 1973. George's lawyers applied for the planning just to make sure that was OK. They wrote to the local council and said, we're going to use it as a residential training centre for Krishna consciousness. It was a decision that would thrust this little-known English manor into the spotlight, as very quickly it became clear that this wasn't just a quiet place of learning, popular with converts. It was also attracting the wider Hindu community. It wasn't just the people who were following the movement who came here. There were a lot of Hindus who were coming here as well because this was the one large temple that we could all come out and visit, especially at Janmashtami, which is the birth date of Krishna. And that's the day when all Hindus actually make a point of coming to the temple. So we'd have a large numbers of cars coming through the village, which then really made an issue for the villages. They were saying that they can't get into the village, there's a lot of noise, and they felt that the quiet village atmosphere was being taken away. Complaints about visitor numbers were made to the council. The controversy focused on the manor's purpose and whether a building established as a theological college could also serve as a place of public worship. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a meeting of the Bushy and Alderman Planning Sub. I think the council felt that a residential training place would be like a monastery, so there wouldn't be very many people coming to it. Whereas what they were seeing at the manor was tens of thousands of people coming on big occasions. Despite the Hare Krishna's suggestion of building an alternative access road bypassing the village, in 1994 matters came to a head. The local council issued an order which, if enforced, would close the manor for public worship and turn all Hindu visitors into lawbreakers. When we heard that the manor would be closed, I mean, the Hindu... I mean, everyone was really upset. The temple was to close on March the 16th. I remember standing in the temple the night before. It was packed. It was a Tuesday night. Everyone was in there and they thought, this could be our last chance to visit the temple. For British Hindus, who usually kept a low profile, it was a threat that galvanised them into action.
Thousands of Hindus from all over the country converged on central London today to protest at what they say is an attack on their freedom to worship. They don't close churches down or anything like that, so why are they closing our manor down? We want to worship and we want to know our rights, what to do with the God. It, oh, it, it was such a great feeling to see that so many people have taken time off, closed their businesses, and come there to help us to keep this place open. Um, we've no idea how many people were going to come for that. As it turned out, the police told me on that day it was 37,000 people. No one believes that any other community would suffer like this. The government and the local council would never try to close down any other shrine or religious institute in the way that they have treated this temple. It's insane. And you've got to understand, Hindus don't do this. They are law-abiding, they're, they're so careful, but they just felt this was their chance to make a statement. It was an outpouring of support that paid off. A year later, the Secretary of State agreed that if a new access road was created, the manor could remain open. It was a, a sign, really, that Hindus had arrived. It was such a joy and relief. And they were so pleased with themselves, actually, so proud that they had risked everything, and it actually had paid off.